Alright, back. Oh, yeah. 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 What did they have? Only got fats left, have they? Yeah. They've hit the wall. They have hit the wall. So they're on 99, are they? Yeah. Anybody Orange, you've just crossed the finish line. Well done. It's difficult to see the red and blue chalk drawing on the ground representing the circulatory pathway. However, this runner for the yellow team has been to the muscle and is now returning to the right side of the heart via the vena cava. At the muscle, she received a blue bean bag or carbon dioxide as a byproduct of aerobic metabolism. She'll carry that to the right atrium, right ventricle, and then out the pulmonary artery to the lungs, which is represented by the hoop on the ground. At the lungs, gaseous exchange will occur, so she'll swap her blue bean bag for a red one that is, pick up oxygen and give off her carbon dioxide. Having just returned to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary vein, the LA team member passes on to the next team member, the red bean bag or the oxygen, and a small container. The small container gets filled with water from the bucket on the ground, and that's taken from the left ventricle via the aorta to the muscle. That container represents the stroke volume, that is, the volume of blood being pumped with each beat. So the oxygen rich blood is transported to the muscle and oxygen is transported in the blood attached to haemoglobin which is part of a red blood cell. The oxygen diffuses into the muscle through the thin capillary walls and myoglobin helps attract that oxygen into the muscle and myoglobin not only attracts oxygen into the muscle but delivers it to the mitochondria and the mitochondria is the structure within the muscle cell where food fuels are broken down using oxygen. That is, that's where the aerobic pathway takes place. The mitochondria is also uh, sometimes called the ATP factory. So lots of ATP is produced aerobically in the mitochondria and the byproducts of that are carbon dioxide, heat and water. In our great marathon race we used the table to represent the muscle and the athlete ran up and tipped the water from their little container into the jug on the table. When the volumes reached certain levels, they received bonus ATP. They placed their red bean bag onto the green cone, or the oxygen onto the myoglobin. The oxygen was delivered to the mitochondria and went into the box, or the mitochondria. The athlete chose to burn either fats or carbohydrates. Even though we know we need to use a fuel mix, a combination of fats and carbohydrates, for the purpose of our activity, one oxygen entitled them to either three carbohydrates or one fat. The three carbohydrates yielded two ATP and one fat yielded one ATP. So this showed that fats were energy rich but slower at releasing energy. So that energy was used to reform ATP in the form of a card which went to the race officials and one ATP meant the little man on the marathon course moved along one step for each ATP. Both teams have enough food fuel stored at the table to complete the race, but not completing the race using carbohydrates alone, so if they choose that option they will run out, they will hit the wall. When the first runner on the marathon course reaches particular landmarks or whistles blown and that means the two contestants at that time have a quick quiz question, the successful person choosing from a range of bonuses which introduce the notion of chronic adaptations. So for example one of the bonuses is an increase in stroke volume size so the container becomes a little bit bigger for one minute which means their cardiac output is increased. What is the chemical fuel that can be used to re-synthesize ATP? Yeah, orange. Oh, Uh, they're at 20, Michaela, they're at 20. <laughs>
to highlight the importance of the ATP PC system at the beginning of exercise in providing rapid ATP, we began the great marathon race with each team member sprinting up to the muscle, presenting an, a PC card and having rapid ATP production and sprinting back. Uh, that was done independent of the circulatory pathway to make it quicker. However, it's worth reminding students of the concept of energy system interplay, which states that all three energy systems contribute to ATP production at any given time, with one being the predominant provider. The lactic acid system is also able to be activated in this activity. Each team has a lactic acid card, and when a runner presents that at the muscle, having followed the circulatory pathway, they get a bonus to ATP on top of the ATP they've produced aerobically. A consequence of using the lactic acid system in this activity is that each runner on their next effort must carry the medicine ball. The lactic acid card gets placed on the landmark, the next landmark ahead of their runner. So if their runner is on 15 for example and the landmarks are 20, 40, 60, the card gets placed at 20 and the team doesn't get that card back to be used again until their runner reaches the 20 steps on the marathon race. <laughs> 